Hello, and welcome back to the continuation of problem 5.36, parts C and D. So, part C asks us to find what the final temperature is for this um, state. And we can create a two-step process for this, um, with one step being at constant temperature and the second step being a constant volume. We have to do this because um, this is a non-ideal case and we're trying to find the change in internal energy. And uh, I've proposed that the first step will be a change in temperature given constant volume from 500 to the unknown final temperature and then the second step will be given a constant temperature from one liter to two liter. Because the system is adiabatic and there's no work done, we know that delta U is equal to zero. And the two-step process, we can call the first step delta U1 and the second step delta U2. So we can start off by calculating delta U1, which is equal to uh, the change in the specific heat at constant volume for the real from the initial temperature to the final temperature with respect to the change in temperature, which is equal to the integral from 500 to the unknown final temperature of R times uh, Cp over R minus 1 dt, which we um, found that that was equal to in the previous part B. Using the Cp over R that we found in part B, we know that this is equal to 3.376 plus 0 0.557 times 10 to the negative 3 times t minus 0 0.031 times 10 to the 5 of t t minus 2. Plugging this into the integral, we get that delta u1 is equal to 19.75 times t plus 2.31 times 10 to the negative 3 times t squared plus 25,770.3 divided by t minus 10,506.17 and we cannot solve because the uh, temperature is unknown so we therefore have to go and find what the change in internal energy is for the second step. We know this is at constant temperature, so we can write that it is the integral from the um, volume one to volume two of the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to volume given constant temperature times dv. And we know that du over dv at constant t is equal to temperature times the partial differential of pressure divided over with the uh, over temperature, constant volume, minus P. Therefore, we can plug this known relationship back into our um, given integral for the change in internal energy at the second step. And we need to go back to the van der Waal equation that we have, which is P is equal to RT over V minus P minus a over v squared. To uh, find the first derivative of this with a constant volume, we get that it is equal to r over v minus b. And we can plug this known relationship into the same integral that we've done for the change in the second internal energy. And writing this out, we get it is equal to the integral of rt over v minus b minus pressure dv, and knowing the, um, the van der Waals equation, we can just rearrange, and we know the relationship is actually rt over v minus b minus p is the same thing as a over v squared, and that integral is equal to negative a over the second volume, the final volume, plus a over the initial volume, which we know the final volume is 2 liters, and the initial volume is 1 liter but um, we can use 
gives us in terms of meters cubed. So the final volume is 0 0.002 meters cubed, and the initial volume is 0 0.001 meters cubed. Now, the only thing that's left for us to do is we need to find out what the value of A is. And we know that A is equal to 27 times R times the critical temperature squared divided by 64 times the critical pressure. And we know the critical temperature, which is 132.9 Kelvin, and the critical pressure, which is 34.96 times 10 to the 50 pascals. Solving this, we get that the constant A is equal to 0 0.147. Therefore, solving for delta U2, we get A is equal to 75.3 joules per Now, if we know that delta U is equal to zero, therefore delta U1 plus delta U2 is equal to delta U, which is equal to zero. And we can solve for temperature, as that is the only unknown variable. So 75.3 plus 19.75 times temperature plus 2.31 times temperature maybe. Third, T squared, and so on, so on. So writing up the terms here is equal to zero. And uh, there will be three solutions to this. Temp uh, T is equal to 2.4809 Kelvin, 496.912 Kelvin, or negative 904.176 Kelvin. We know it can't be negative, and two does not make sense, so the correct answer would be 496.912 is less than 500 Kelvin as a final answer. Part D asks us to find what is the change in uh, the entropy of the universe from this uh, reaction. And we know that uh, ds of the system is equal to the partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature and constant volume times dt. plus the partial differential of entropy with respect to volume at constant temperature times dV, which comes from the same relationship as the change in uh, internal energy that we did in part C, which is a two-step process. And we know the first term is just the same as CV over T dT. And the second term from Maxwell's relations, we have it as equal to dP over dT at constant volume, these are all partials, times dV. Both of these terms can be solved from Maxwell's relations, and known relations with the specific volumes, specific heat, the constant volume, and constant pressure. And we've already solved the, the first partial differential of pressure over temperature with, with constant volume, which is just R over V minus B, which simplifies this greatly. And we know what uh, CV is, as we found that in previous steps. I'm just going to write it out again. But this is CV, so we need to include that there is minus 1 at the end, because we found CP over R. But now we're trying, we can just rearrange this to write CV over R, and then I have an R factor on the outside to cancel out those R's, dt, and then keep the second term, R over d minus b, dv, just uh, including the temperature term on the outside, moving that to the inside of this bracket, keep all the temperatures in the same area, you get this, just move the R to the other side, so it's it's just a constant, uh, plus R over B minus B. Now integrating this, as we know the first integral is from 500 Kelvin to 496.912, which we found in part C.
and just copying that same the above equation in. bracket, then times r, dt, and we know that it is from 0.001 to 0.002 meters cubed, we know we use meters cubed and not liters in this case, of r over v minus b. You can use liters, but just make sure your r's are uh, constant throughout the problem. For me, I just like to use it in meters cubed. Then we get the value of r, and I just factored out the r's since there's r in both terms of negative 0 0.0125 plus ln of 0 0.002 minus b over 0 0.001 minus b. End the bracket. We need to find what b is. That's still the same from the uh, Van der Waals equation. And b is equal to r times the critical temperature over 8 times the critical pressure. And as before, the critical temperature of carbon monoxide is 132.9 Kelvin, and the critical pressure of carbon monoxide is 34.96 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Solving this, we get that B is equal to 3.95 times 10 to the negative 5 meters cubed per mole. Plugging this back into um, the equation, get that the change of uh, entropy in the system is 5.82 joules per mole Kelvin. And um, we know this is insulated, therefore delta, the change of entropy of the surroundings is equal to zero because there's nothing being released. It's very well insulated. Therefore, delta S of the system is equal to change of entropy of the universe. Therefore, change of entropy of the universe is equal to 5.82 joules per mole Kelvin.